All right, so now let's move on to section two, or what we've marked off as section two, uh, pages 59 through 68 of the FIDO. Uh, this section really has uh, two different arguments uh, in it. The, the first is a general argument about opposites and opposites being generated from each other. And the second is a, an argument about the theory of the forms. The theory of the forms has come up earlier uh, in the first section, and I think it's actually explained a little better now. You'll see it's one of the best explanations of the theory of the forms that you'll get in any of the Platonic dialogues, and it's something that you should really pay attention to, uh, especially as we move on to reading Aristotle and reading later philosophers as a contrast. Uh, that is, uh, when we speak about Plato, um, we are going to be speaking of the theory of the forms, basically his theory of reality, his theory of knowledge is really wrapped up with this so-called theory of forms, uh, what is, I think, translated in our text as essence. So we'll be using those terms fairly interchangeably in our discussion of the Phaedo, if not later on. So what has Socrates established or tried to establish so far? He's been concerned with the idea that the philosopher should welcome death because it's only after death with the separation of the soul and its release from the prison of the body that the soul as mind, as intellect, can achieve true knowledge. Uh, but Thebes, at the beginning of this section on page 59, uh, challenges Socrates. He says, I agree, Socrates, in the greater part of what you say, but in what relates to the soul, men are apt to be incredulous. They fear that when she leaves the body, her place may be nowhere, and that on the very day of death, she may be destroyed and perish. That is, uh, perhaps you're right that the soul can only gain true knowledge when it's released from the body, but does it have any existence when it's released from the body? So what Socrates has got to try to establish now is that the soul does, that the soul can be independent, and that the soul um, does not perish when the body perishes. Now, his first argument about that, again, has to do with opposites, and this uh, starts at the bottom of page 59 and continues to the top of page 63. I want you to pay close attention to this argument, read it through. Uh, tell me uh, whether you find it uh, convincing. In general terms, he seems to be saying that of all things that, ha that admit of an opposite, you know, that have an opposite, uh, uh, large and small, life and death, uh, being awake and being asleep, that each one of these things is generated out of its opposite. You can see where he's going here. Um, he wants to establish that life is generated out of death and death is generated out of life. Uh, the doc, he, he refers to it as the ancient doctrine on the, on the bottom of page 59, and you'll see that what he describes really does appear to be a form of reincarnation. Uh, that is, that uh, the soul upon the death of the body goes somewhere and then comes back inhabiting a different body. And at various points in the dialogue, he suggests that the way you live your life will determine the form in which you'll come back which sounds like a doctrine, I, I guess it's called karma. You guys probably know that better than I do. So um, th this notion that, the, that opposites are generated out of each other, that they necessarily imply each other, has uh, some substance to it. Uh, certainly, uh, we say that there's a state called uh, being asleep. And you know, normally speaking, being asleep implies having been awake. Uh, we say there is a, uh, a state called, uh, I guess, being dead. And uh, if something is dead, it would seem to imply necessarily that it was at one point alive. So, uh, in this argument, uh, he says that one of these processes of changing from one opposite to another is visible. That is, the process of changing from being alive to being dead. This is at the bottom of page 61. Uh, 
he says, and one of the two processes or generations is visible, for surely the act of dying is visible, surely. And may not the other be inferred as the complement of nature, who is not supposed to go on one leg only. That is, if we see the death being generated out of its opposite, being alive, then can we not infer that being alive is generated out of being dead? That is, that uh, the general conclusion being that uh, the souls of the living come from death, that is, from other souls that have passed out of bodies. Uh, I may not be doing complete justice to this argument. Please read it yourself carefully and make of it what you will. Uh, we'll discuss it perhaps in the, in the forums. Uh, now the second, and I have to say more central uh, argument of this section begins on page 63, and that has to do with the forms and the notion that knowledge is really recollection. 